Hi, I'm Gerald. This is my wife Simone. And it's been a little over a year since we moved out onto our 21 acre property. Now when we tell you we had zero experience coming into it, we had zero experience coming into it. And that's because we grew up in the suburbs, we lived in apartments all throughout college and post-college, then we got married in 2020 and moved into an apartment in the heart of Nashville, and then from there, we moved on to 21 acres in 2022. Now to you, that may sound like an insane move to make and a giant task to take on with zero experience. And you would be correct. <laughs> we thought so too. Take this up and probably pull our hair out. Ugh. But even larger than the task was our excitement to take it on. Now, why was it exciting? Because it provided everything that we needed in order to walk in the purpose and vision that God had given us 10 years ago. It's an excellent place to raise a family in. It's also an excellent environment to experience the creator and his creation. It's also a great location to create lasting memories with friends and family. There's large amounts of fertile land here to grow tons of the highest quality produce possible, not just for our household, but for our extended family and friends, and also for our cold pressed juice business that we use to serve the community. All of which he called us to for the purpose of showcasing and sharing it like this, so that you can see the contrast between the pain, the bondage, and the struggle that the world has to offer and the life, the liberty, and the freedom that he has to offer so that you may look up and glorify him. We were really able to start moving on that faith once we closed on the house in August of 2022. We're here! I can't believe it. I mean, like, what? Huh? Who gave us a lake? God. Now, after we closed, we still had two months lease left of our apartment, which was great because the house wasn't up to our standard of livable conditions. So it gave us time to really put in some work. Look who I found. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right, tell them about all the work we did when we first got in. Yes, definitely knew there were four major things we wanted to get done before we moved in, in those two months. The first thing, bathroom. Absolutely the bathroom. The second thing was the flooring. The third thing was the living room. And the fourth thing were a few things in the kitchen. So the bathroom was quite a hot mess. And as you can see, there was carpet on the floor. So the very first day we took possession of the house, that was the first thing that had to go. So once we got the carpet ripped out, we started to work on the bigger things, starting with the tub and the tub surround. And we basically had to rip the whole wall out just to get it out. And then we started to work on the vanity and getting that out of there to make way for the new one. And this is what we have. She is gorgeous, all right? <laughs> This vanity was so heavy, but we got it in there and could finally start working on the prettier things. So we painted the entire bathroom, we laid a new floor, we got a new bathtub and put new tile surround in and completely just made the bathroom our own. So in real time, while the bathroom was actually getting completed, we were simultaneously working on the flooring throughout the rest of the house. We've gotten a lot done though. So as you guys have seen, we pulled up the carpet in here pulled up the carpet in the living room and pulled up the carpet in the hallway. So now onto the hard part. This floor, the terracotta. I like the terracotta, just not how they had it in this area. It looked very choppy and the house really is not that big already. So the choppiness of it all just didn't make any sense to me. So now we are on to this portion of the terracotta and my goodness we are going to take this up and probably pull our hair out in the process Ugh. he's tired i'm tired we are putting our blood sweat and tears no tears into this place 
Yeah. Just to get it. My prepared. goodness, that terracotta tile was such a pain to get up, but we finally got it up and had all of the floors prepped and ready for the new vinyl. But before we did that, we wanted to get all the painting out the way, starting with the living room. So in here, we started with the windows and we just wanted to give them an updated look. So we went with black on the inside and white on the trim. And then we moved on to the beam. We said we were gonna sand it down because there is, this is a real wood beam, but we tried this much and it took way too long. And we're kind of under time cap here. So we are painting. So once the beam was painted, we were finally able to now go ahead and paint the rest of the walls. And since the painting was done, we were now able to start laying our flooring. As you guys know, we went with florets and we went with the Nikon. And it's finally here. This is the only thing on the truck. Look at this. Once the flooring was delivered, our friend and contractor CJ, who also did the work in the bathroom, came to teach us how to lay the flooring. Now learning to lay the floors was a simpler concept than what we had originally thought, but honestly, this was just not my forte, so I left this job to the boys. I'm loving this floor. So we went with Nikon. It looks, it looks so good. It makes the space much brighter and airier, but I mean, look at this. I think it looks so nice. The flooring in the living room honestly turned out better than we could have expected. We love it so much and it really brought the space to life. So we moved on to the kitchen and before we could lay the floor in there, we had to get rid of some unnecessary cabinetry that was really blocking the view. You missed it, but we got it. Woo! Woo -woo -woo. In those two months, we did so much work. We were so tired and had put so much effort into it, but we finally got it to a point that we were comfortable enough to move in. Today is another moving day. We've been moving for the last like two weeks, very slowly. Every time we go to the house, we'll take something. That's why it's pretty bare back there, but we, we're not done. So tomorrow we have to be out of this apartment and we still have all of this stuff. Couch is gonna be our next thing to take. We're gonna take that today and we take all of that stuff. The bed's still here, but it kind of cleared some things out already. Still need to take these things off of the wall. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, so just gonna be packing up today and taking stuff over to the house. But wanted to keep you guys posted, so let's try to knock this out. This is not how it's gonna be, but you know, it's a good start. So anyway, yep, here's the couch. We're actually having someone come clean the couch next week. I want a big, nice big area rug here. I want it to feel really cozy. So yeah, we have a lot of work to do. A lot, Ugh, still so much to do. So that's the update. We didn't really have a chance to do any celebrating or anything since we had closed on the house. And that's something we really wanted to do with our friends and family. So I decided to go ahead and start working on the fire pit out back. The great thing about the fire pit is that the previous homeowners already had it in a great location and it had a good base to it too. It just needed a little bit of character sprinkled onto it. No, I'm just gonna work with this instead of doing all the work to take it out and bring other stuff in. We're gonna work with this. The first thing that I did was dig a trench around it so I could have a nice even circle. And then from there, I removed the existing rocks from the burn area they had. And then I brought in these giant rocks that were just all over the property already. And after I got those in, I went out and I bought these giant flagstones. These stones aren't going anywhere. They're almost 400 pounds of stone. So once they're set in place, they're not gonna be moving too much anyway. <sighs> now the way that I loaded these up to move them was extra sketchy. And the way I unloaded them was even sketchier than that. But after I got them off of there, I shaped them up how I wanted them and they were looking good. We are in the home stretch. 
This joint is massive. Actually, both of these are. But I like it. I think that looks good. Now, I was looking for some Adirondack chairs, and Simone found some for a great deal. So we got those, got them in, added some of the finishing touches, and it turned out great. I think it turned out excellently. I mean, this is a great. So with our fire pit finished up, we were able to have our parents over for a little miniature housewarming celebration. And while we were working on all that stuff, it did not take us long to realize just how many animals, how much wildlife we were gonna have to be dealing okay, with out here. I'm gonna tell you guys a story about an owl that died. <laughs> it was very, very early in the morning, probably like 6 a.m and we heard this loud bang. We were still sleeping. Honestly, there's a lot of birds that usually hit the big window right there in the mornings. We go outside and it's an owl. An owl died. Usually the birds, it was marble. I didn't know what was running after me. Anyway. She was right to be scared because you never know what you're going to catch running after you out here. Run! Right. Moving You're right. I was looking outside through the window and I saw this thing moving. And I come out and it's this humongous turtle. I missed. I pulled up. The turkeys are leaving. Come here. I got it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it's gonna be a quick one, guys. You finna kill him. You see him? You finna jump on me. And the amount of deer out here too, insane. I mean, this is basically a daily occurrence. There's also a bunch of possums, raccoons, and squirrels. My goodness, y'all wouldn't believe how many squirrels are out here. And also lots of field of mice. Which is why we got these guys right here. I have no idea where Marble is. She acting like it ain't negative, literally negative three degrees outside. But she's somewhere around here. Oh, here she is. Acting like it ain't cold out there. We got these guys for free through a working cat program in our city called Humane Fort Wayne and they just brought the cats out they brought the cages and everything they got it all set up for us and then they taught us the care protocol and then it was up to us from there is that a pond yeah, yeah it is yeah oh, the cats are gonna love oh good <laughs> so oh. Are fish in there? some cats fish oh some cats, some cats a little fish oh. wow i don't know if these guys can but they can't Sign that they both came out right away. Oh, look at her. Yeah. She don't like it. Yeah, they're going to hiss at each other, and that's part of the purpose of this arrangement. We want them to Get do this to. now yeah. while they're separated safely and they can't fight each other. Yeah. Because they're not going to do this for two straight weeks. So right. you heard him say two straight weeks, and that's how long we had to keep them in these cages to get them acclimated. He also told us to crack the garage so they could look outside and get a feel for the area. She don't like that. She she hid. Shadow, formerly known as Midnight, immediately started plying oh, his jailbreak. Our favorite one. <laughs> okay, we found him, guys. He's behind this tree. Midnight. Look at him. Midnight. Her and it wasn't long until he executed another one. What are you doing? Come on, come on. So we decided to go ahead and just let them out and they started doing their job immediately. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't. So yeah, we couldn't be more happy with them. They have done their job excellently. 
So that whole cat deal took place in February, and later that same month, my wife and I got started on our garden and orchard up in a big open spot in the back of our property. We started working on the beds first, and then from there we started building out our orchard. The entirety of the garden orchard area is about 12,000 square feet, which is about a third of an acre. I'd say I got a little bit less than halfway done, really close to halfway, but this was real naked when I was first showing y'all. I helped Gerald with the garden where I could, but we were actually expecting our first guests in just a few weeks, so I had to get to work on the guest bedroom. The guest bedroom was definitely a budget-friendly makeover because we ended up using a lot of the furniture and things we had from previous apartments and furniture we already owned. The end result turned out amazing and our guests said that they were more than comfortable. Once that project was complete, spring was knocking at our door and we were itching to get outside. I'm so happy to be recording outside in the sunshine. You just don't even know, but spring is here. Now that spring was here, we had zero intention of being cooped up in the house anymore. So we immediately got to work on the patio. Now the patio furniture set was a hand-me-down from my in-laws and the rug was from my mom. And we used both of those as a baseline for the patio makeover. We also did buy a few new things and we put everything together and the space came out beautifully better than we could have asked and it was the perfect place for us to hang out and also host family and friends. While Simone was down there working on that, it was time to start taking the transplants that I had been nursing for the past couple of months up to the garden so I could transplant them into the soil. And once she was done down there, she came on up to help yeah. me out. And we planted hundreds of transplants. Once we got all of those put in, it was time to go back down to the house and start tackling all of the yard work that the spring had brought us. We actively managed only about five acres and then just let the rest of it grow naturally. But we quickly learned just how challenging managing those five acres is from constantly having to chop up fallen trees and pick up twigs and sticks to stacking firewood to having to mow the five acres and pick up weeds. It's a lot. Let me show you guys what we're working with right now in the backyard. It is quite a mess. This is all overgrown. Our lawnmower has been in the shop for the past few weeks, so we haven't even cut our grass yet. That's what it's looking like. I mean, just really an overgrown mess. I mean, just look at how overgrown this grass is. My goodness. Hot mess. Good thing we don't have neighbors because they would not like us. And while we don't have a completely solid system of dealing with it all yet, we're bound to find one very soon because the payoff of seeing the yard in good shape is unbeatable. Okay, so what a difference. Just having the grass cut make, oh my goodness, it looks so much better. I love it. So that went on for a while, and before we knew it, it was July 4th. And we decided that we wanted to make that our first big hosting event. And it was very nerve wracking but also very exciting because we were about to catch our first glimpse at one of our biggest motivators, which was creating a space to enjoy and create memories with friends and family. And sure enough, the glimpse that the Lord gave us was beautiful. Our hearts were so full of joy and gratitude for being able to create a space that we could share and enjoy with the people that we care about the most. And that right there was the perfect reassurance to keep us pushing in our purpose and continuing in our calling to build this thing up. A few weeks after this, it was time to get our pier replaced. Because the year before, in the month that we first bought the house, a storm wow. came through and a tree fell on it and broke it. What? What in the world? So apparently, ooh, what kind of fish is that? Apparently we had a big windstorm that we knew nothing about. Even though the beach tree is we hear, of course, my tree's still going crazy. You know that. But look at this. <laughs> Dang, it broke the deck. Dang. 
That's crazy. Look at this mug. That's more money for us. This fell. Dang, look at that mug right there. That big old branch. That is crazy. Fast forward to a year later, they got that old beat up one taken out and they popped in a brand new one for us and we couldn't be more pleased and happy to be able to enjoy this one and not have to look out the window at that beat up raggedy broke one that they took up out of there. Ooh, I was nervous. Now at this point of the year, the pressure was really starting to rise because our first farmer's market was fast approaching. And we had spent the past two or three years buying all the equipment, buying the bottles and whatnot, going to the health department, buying all those certificates and everything, coming out of all that money, not to mention all the juice recipe testing and everything. We did a lot just to be able to make it down to the farmer's market. But also not to mention, we were about to put ourselves out there in front of our entire community um, for the first time. And a big portion of why we bought this house was to move the juice business forward. So the pressure was on. Now we really weren't feeling that much pressure in the days leading up to the market, but instead we were actually really excited and confident going into it. So we ran around, grabbed all the stuff that we needed for our booth setup. Love it. It looks so good. Thank you. Okay. And then the day before the market, the day that we were going to do our juicing, we did a little mock booth setup and okay, walk so through. Here's what we have and this is what our booth looks like. And we will have a tablecloth too, so it'll look much more kind of put together. We have our sample station set up our little sign, our juice samples. We're gonna have our menu sign. This is going to say something to attract people to our booth. We went up to the garden and picked plenty of produce so we could start making the juices. Even had us a little mini photo shoot. We got everything loaded up and then we went on down to the commercial kitchen to get going. We made it, finally. Mm -hmm. So we get everything out, take it in, get it all prepped and ready. We got set up and all. And then came time to start juicing and boy, did the Lord throw us a test. My knees and my back. <laughs> my back. <laughs> Your knees. My left knee hurt like a mug. We, my back. Juicing. we got two juices done. We've been there juicing like a mug for a while. It was a struggle so we stopped went outside had a little lunch break gave ourselves a pep talk and then we got ourselves together to go back inside and finish this thing right, this is where faith shines it's easy to have faith in something when you're sitting on the couch or sitting somewhere just kind of thinking about it and planning it so another thing to have faith when it start punching you in the mouth that's when you see what you made of and that's when you see what your faith made of which your faith was founded in. Just gotta keep going. If it ain't working, keep working at it till you figure it out. Now, if you're familiar at all with juicing, you know that it takes a lot just to get a little bit of juice. Now, going into this day, we definitely thought we would be able to be in and out, home at a decent time, wrapped up, getting a good night's sleep, to prepare for our first market. <laughs> the joke was on us. You guys, we started juicing at three o'clock and we didn't leave that place until 3.22 a.m. We're done. <laughs> Can't see us. It's 3.22 a.m. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we gotta go to the drawing boards and refine. But, Mark it tomorrow. Uh, Y'all remember that uh, pressure I said we weren't feeling anymore? Well, it was back with a vengeance times 10. At least it was for me anyway. Because I'm sitting there like, oh my goodness. I done brought this woman into this. I done married her. She followed, she done followed me, trusted me, held me down for years. We went out here and got this big old crib. We did all of this stuff. And it's been to blow up in our face. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> But at the end of the day, 
we knew it was a test, so our faith remained. We got up, running on less than an hour of sleep, went down to the market, and started getting set up. Once we were finished with our setup, we were left to just sit in our emotions as we waited for the customers to start coming in. Our friends and family were the first to show up, which honestly meant more to us than anything. And then shortly after that, the customers started coming and we started doing very, very well. It's going really well and blessings are abundant. What else, what you gotta say? What I tell y'all early in the video, faith, when it's being tried is when it shines the most. That's when you gotta hold on the tightest. We'll let y'all know in a second. We went from not knowing what to expect at all to selling out of every single juice that we brought halfway through the market. And little did we know that that essentially was going to be the standard throughout the rest of the year. And just like the 4th of July, it gave us the perfect reassurance to keep ramping this thing up. And now here we are, present day, and in the last few months we've been working with a program called NRCS, and that program will really help us to level up this property and the juice business all in one. So stay tuned to see all of the new heights that the Lord is taking us to, and also we thank you and appreciate you for watching until the end of this video. And we want to do something for you too. We're going to be doing a little giveaway. All you have to do to enter is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down in the comment section about your favorite part of this video and what you would like to see from us in the future. You do that, you enter into a giveaway for the chance to win a $150 gift card to Lowe's. So, look forward to seeing you down there. Until next time, we'll catch you then. Enter in. Bye. <laughs> Peace.